Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you something a lot of you've been asking about for a very, very long period of time. Not just in general in terms of a, a new motherboard, but something entirely new that we've never done before. And that's specifically an ROG Mini ITX motherboard. Uh, this is the brand new introduction of a new board that you can see right here, which is the brand new Impact. This rounds out our entire gaming series and enthusiast series of motherboards in the ROG Z87 chipset. And uh, like always here in this overview, we're we're going to pretty much be covering everything on the ins and outs of what makes this board unique and what we feel really redefines the performance category for the mini ITX segmentation. And we're going to talk about a lot of the brand new features and functions that we've introduced that are exclusive uh, to the impact and really what sets it apart from uh, any other mini ITX board on the market and even kind of bringing into new levels of functionality that you could have never before thought were possible on a mini ITX board. So as always, we're going to cover the accessories, the features, the functionality, and then we'll wrap it up with you and give you a little bit of perspective on what considerations you might have when considering a uh, ROG Mini ITX impact board uh, for your Z87 base build. So with that, let's first go ahead and take a look at the accessories that come included with our impact. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and cracked open the actual case for you, taken out the accessories. So let's go ahead and cover those quickly. Uh, right off the bat, you can see right here, we've got four serial ATA cables. Okay, so that gives us total of four SATA 6G cables. That actually is perfect because the motherboard has four serial ATA port sets. It means there's a cable for every single port that's on there. We have our IO shield, and this is actually our higher end padded IO shield, which is not only softer in touch, but helps to block EMI, or electromagnetic interference, from coming into the motherboard. We then also have a special version of our Q connector. Uh, this little guy right here essentially goes ahead and gives us an extension so that we can go ahead and plug this in into the actual uh, front end leads onto the mini ITX board itself and then go ahead and run these out to the leads that are on our chassis for things like the power button, the reset, the power LED, things along those lines. Makes the cabling process significantly easier, especially within a mini ITX chassis. From there, we've of course got uh, the user guide in the manual. This details all the specifications, information on installation, feature set, and functionality. You want to make sure to take a look at this, especially when you're installing the actual system. A lot of good information that's in there. We have uh, ROG cable ties. These actually go onto the serial ATA cables, allow you to go ahead and quickly label uh, the actual serial ATA devices that you're utilizing and the order for them. Um, but you can also go ahead and use our UEFI and our brand new SATA renaming option as well. Uh, of course, we have a cool little ROG uh, gamers bitch. That you can go ahead and affix to your chassis or anywhere you'd like. We then also have our support CD. Support CD, make sure and utilize this disk though to take advantage of AI Suite 3. So that's our integrated utility for tweaking and tuning and having all our advanced controls inside the operating system like fan controls, voltage, overclocking, things along those lines. But you're also going to have a full one-year licensed version of a Kapersky antivirus as well as Daemon Tools Pro as well as some really cool supplemental software like ROG RAM Disk where you can take your system memory and set up an actual virtual disk so that you can run applications or install programs and run them directly from memory. So next up here, we've got our MPCI combo card. This is actually version 2.0 compared to the previous generation. Uh, the big addition that we're going to have is not only an improvement in terms of the actual wireless functionality, uh, so we've stepped up to, to 811 AC support, so that's the fastest uh, wireless standard you can currently get. Additionally, it's a native PCI Express-based connection, so offering better throughput and lower latency than USB-based solutions. Uh, and you're also going to get Bluetooth 4.0 support, which is great for peripherals like game controllers, headphones, keyboards and mice, or whatever you're looking for in terms of pairing to different types of mobile products. You also have optional support for the newest uh, ultra small form factor flash storage and that's going to be NGFF or what some people refer to as uh, the M.2 standard, which is the actual official name. This replaces MSATA. Uh, so this is an example right here where you could go ahead and install one of these right there and you'd be good to go and you can entirely run your entire operating system or use it as a caching mechanism. It's really entirely up to you. The great thing about this is because you have not only wireless, Bluetooth, and support for an ultra small form factor flash storage integrated into an ultra small compact uh, expansion module, that really complements the mini ITX based form factor uh, where we're not crowding the board up with additional connectivity or expansion cards uh, so we keep things really nice and integrated. So with that, uh, we also have included here the antenna-based solution uh, that complements the MPCI combo card. 
And lastly, we have a very, very special item that's not installed on the board, and we're going to go more into depth uh, when we reach the features of the Impact motherboard, but that's going to be the Supreme FX audio module. This right here takes audio uh, on a motherboard to an entirely different level and brings kind of the ethos of us really wanting to give you a much higher caliber of audio and an improved sound experience on board uh, with this Supreme FX audio design. And so this is a, a little card essentially that you will go ahead and mount onto the board. Great thing is it doesn't impact the overall usability, but we'll talk more about its design features uh, once we actually get to the actual motherboard itself. So with that, let's go ahead and clear these off and take a look at our Maxima 6 Impact. Okay guys, so before I jump into uh, the board itself and talk about the topology, the feature set, the design, a lot of the things that really make this Maxima 6 Impact uh, truly unique. So I want to talk a little bit about how long it took us to get here. This is a really special board and it's been a board that we've worked on for a considerable period of time. And it's also important that right now we call out to you guys as are being our users, uh, you know, and our, our customers and let you know that we've heard you loud and clear, you know, that we have been consistently looking at the community looking at the feedback that you guys have been giving us over countless chipset generations and letting us know that you wanted to have something like this. And I think that this is an important point to call out because we've continually shown that ROG is committed to bringing you guys best in class designs, uh, whether it was the first company to bring out, you know, true gaming grade based motherboards uh, with, you know, our, our Blitz and our Crosshairs our Maximus and our Rampage series boards uh, that then evolved of course into the first high performance micro ATX board with the Gene series uh, to that now we have something like this in terms of an ultra small form factor with the Impact and Mini ITX. So you guys can see here this is just some of the commentary where people have just been continually asking about this. Um, but it's taken us so long because doing this type of board design is not easy and that's kind of what I want to talk a little bit about is that there's a huge amount of specialized focus that we've brought in not only from the power delivery side but in the sound, even in the layout consistency considerations that take a huge amount of consideration and a lot of effort to execute on. So let's take a look at a little bit more of what really makes this board unique. Okay guys, so first up here in terms of the topology and the unique design and features of the motherboard for this Maxima 6 Impact is going to be the VRM. Uh, this board being an ROG series motherboard still continues in the tradition of offering our Extreme Engine GT Plus 3 power design, meaning that we're giving you an outstanding level of performance uh, even though we have an ultra small form factor board. And how we achieved this of course was utilizing a specialized vertical design, meaning that we didn't uh, go in the horizontal lower path and impact the actual area that you would have when working with the micro ATX board. And that's actually what you see here in this section. Now, uh, what's covering the majority of the VRM componentry, so things like our MOSFETs, our chokes, a aka the inductors, as well as the capacitors, is actually this heat sink right here. But I've gone ahead and removed two screws to be able to give you guys a little bit more insight. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off here and allow you to go ahead and see the actual Extreme Engine GG+. So there we've got this really nice, just beautiful looking um, VRM heatsink that of course has the ROGI and the Republic of Gamers logo on it. But you can see that when we take a look at this here, you can see this really high performance VRM array. This is actually even higher end than most uh, competitors based motherboards in terms of the power solution capability. So when we talk about it being really a no compromise based design, it really is. Uh, we have a huge amount of power output capability with these black wing chokes. These are rated actually up to 60 amps in terms of their output power. So that's amazing in terms of what's capable here. They feature a special dissipative fin design which lowers the actual operating temperature of the actual inductor aiding in stability and improving the overall efficiency. Even the gold coating actually assists in its overall efficiency and performance. We continue to utilize high performance MOSFETs and drivers to go ahead and be able to aid in the voltage threshold and power output capabilities and we continue to utilize high performance 10k rated capacitors that are down here which are part of our Nichicon GT caps. Those are rated actually at not only a higher level uh, in terms of their power output capability even compared to the majority of quote unquote pause caps that you're going to sometimes see on other competitors boards but offer a significantly improved uh, level of uh, temperature performance not only uh, offering significantly cooler temperature performance but significantly higher temperature performance and then when you incorporate that with their 10k rating uh, as compared to let's say 2k rated capacitors that's 5x the lifespan so overall you can feel really confident in that this extreme engine gg plus vrm design is going to allow for you to have great stability great efficiency and great overclockability even though you're talking about an ultra small form factor board. So for you guys that are looking to push it even in a high performance small form factor enclosure, uh, you're definitely going to be able to do that. You know, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 gigahertz plus is not going to be an issue assuming you've got the quality to keep up with it along with the CPU. So next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look more at some of the actual connection points and some of the functionality that's offered on this board. Okay guys, so uh, covering here the topology of the board here from the top, we've got three four pin fan headers. 
Uh, so of course that's for CPU, CPU optional, and then a, a chassis fan. Uh, this is extraordinary that this Mini ITX board actually has four PWM fan headers. Keep in mind these all support our Fan Expert 2 technology, meaning that each one of these uh, support three pin fan control operation along with four pin fan control operation, and that's fully adjustable not only within the UEFI, or AKA the BIOS, but also with AI Suite 3. So that means you can fully control and adjust the fan curves, uh, auto name each one of these headers. You have an extensive level of granularity and control available to you, uh, which is really nice for these small form factor enclosures, which you want to keep cool as well as quiet. Uh, moving past that, of course, you can see here that we've got the Extreme Engine Digi Plus VRM, the vertical uh, VRM, which gives us great power delivery. Uh, right there next to it, we have two DIMMs. Uh, of course, the board supports two DIMMs, a uh, dual channel operation. Uh, we've actually rated this board for over DDR3 3000. So this is an outright beast when it comes to the DDR3 overclocking capability, assuming your CPU can keep up and you've got some ultra high performance DIMMs. Um, right next to that, of course, we've got a lot, uh, our CPU power connection as well as our 24 pin uh, um, power connection and then of course you're going to continue to see these black Nichicon GT rated capacitors so 10k rated caps with ultra high performance in terms of uh, their actual temperature tolerance as well as their overall total capacitance their power output capability um, from there here we've got a little bit of kind of an overclocking focus for enthusiasts that might be testing it in an open area so we've got an onboard start button as well as a reset button right next to that we've got another a four pin PWM chassis fan header so that rounds out the four fan headers that we offer on this board uh, once again with three pin and four pin control right below that we have our front usb3 header and then right below that we have the front chassis leads front chassis leads are going to be for things like of course your power your reset uh, your power led and things along those lines now there's another uh, set of pins right here two pins that are the drct header uh, the great thing about the drct header is that you can go ahead and run your reset cable directly to that header and you can reboot directly into the uefi by pressing your reset button so no more having to mash the delete key or the f2 key makes the process quite a bit easier now right below that of course you're going to see one long red pci express by 16 slot so that's great there for you guys that want to be able to go ahead and upgrade utilizing a higher performance graphics card just go ahead and slot it in there and you can see that we actually utilize an open end connection that means that you don't have to worry about pulling out or depressing anything to take out the graphics card so it makes the process really really easy you can just essentially install it and slide it straight out don't have to worry about trying to figure out a way to put your finger into that area to remove or upgrade the graphics card over time uh, from there we're going to go ahead and move across here and you can see that we've got a really compacted area that we'll go more into when we talk about the actual um, I.O. panel and the unique aspects of integration such as our M combo module which has the 811 AC support and the Bluetooth 4.0 and the support for the uh, NGFF or the M.2 flash storage. Here's our Supreme FX module. Now right next to that and right above the PCI Express slot we've got four serial ATA ports. Uh, those are all natively provided by the chipset and are all SATA 6G capable. So that's a, a great level of flexibility in terms of the expansion. And of uh, course, the chipset supports SSD caching as well as RAID 0 and RAID 1 support. Coming over from here, we've also got another great feature that you can see in terms of the... Um, CMOS battery, it's vertically raised, so it doesn't really impact anything here, and we don't, we're not really obstructing it in most situations. But right below it, we have the ROG extension header. So this is great for you guys that want to be able to purchase the OC panel and connect it and be able to utilize it with the ROG impact board. Uh, it's a great option for you guys that are tweakers, tuners, or enthusiasts are looking for a really cool uh, display panel for temperaturing uh, fan control functionality and things along those lines. Um, lastly, one important point to kind of look out is that we've taken a lot of care in terms of the overall layout. Um, we've gone through literally hundreds of different types of configurations where you can see that we have the CPU socket quite a bit above the PCI Express slot. The reason why that's important is because this entire area is open to you so that you can go ahead and utilize very large based low profile CPU coolers. Uh, so whether it's something like a Prometheus Samuel base cooler, a Noctua low profile cooler, uh, there's a lot of different options that are out there, even the Thermalrite uh, AXP series. These are all going to fit without any issues, or of course if you're using a closed loop water cooling solution, all of those fit. And this is really going to be a key item where some of the other uh, mini ITX boards you're going to see out there on the marketplace haven't taken this care. So as soon as you put a larger CPU heatsink in there, it impacts immediately with the PCI Express slot. So it really limits you to almost being able to use a very basic, a uh, smaller type of heatsink solution. So that's another design point that doesn't immediately jump out but shows the attention to detail that we've brought with the Maxima 6 Impact. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and turn the board to its side and take a look at the back I.O.
Okay guys, so now let's go ahead and take a look here at the back I.O. And uh, even though it's a mini ITX board, it's definitely feature rich. So we can see right here, we've got a Toslink optical output, which works in conjunction with our ALC 1150 audio codec, uh, which supports DTS Connect, uh, which is a great uh, multi-channel encoding feature for you guys that are connecting digital set of speakers uh, or a receiver. Uh, from there, we have an HDMI and DisplayPort output, both when used in conjunction with the iGPU do also support not only QHD resolutions, but even 4K resolution. Next up, we've got our kind of overclockers corner here where we have a lot of usable points, uh, including an integrated debug, deco uh, debug LED. We have our memo key button, uh, as well as we have the direct key button. The direct key button being a quick one-touch button to allow us to reboot straight into the UEFI. The memo key button being a quick way to not only do a semi-clear CMOS, meaning that we won't reset all of our UEFI parameters, such as maybe RAID or fan profiles or different parameters that we've gone ahead and adjusted, uh, but can also just go ahead and reset for um, frequencies and voltages, as well as go ahead and improve interoperability and compatibility for memory. We've got a clear CMOS button and an ROG connect button, so a lot going on in this section here. Now, before we go ahead and continue on to the rest of the I.O., uh, we still do offer actually our QLED technology, but it's in such a tight space and in integration. We're going to go ahead and quickly just tighten in on a zoom for you to allow you to see where we've gone ahead and placed that onto the board. Okay, guys, so if you take a look right in here in this section, uh, we actually have our four uh, QLEDs, which are quick diagnostic LEDs for the CPU, the DRAM, the graphics card, and for the boot device. So still, if you're looking for a quick one LED mechanism to allow you to know if the system is having issues during its post-process, you will see those illuminated there in terms of a red LED as part of our QLED diagnostic system. So that works in conjunction with the debug LED uh, for those users that are more advanced and want to debug code. So with that, let's go ahead and continue to cover the back eye. Okay, next up we've got a four USB 2 ports, and with those USB 2 ports, we still actually maintain the ability to run our ROG Connect, which is our external uh, control mechanism to not only diagnose, monitor, and control your system through a USB-enabled uh, tablet or USB-enabled notebook, so that's a great feature. Uh, in addition, our USB BIOS flashback, which is an easy way without any CPU, memory, or graphics card installed to go ahead and directly flash or recover your UEFI in the event it becomes corrupted or you want an easy way to update it. All you need is the PSU standby power connected. Next up, we've got four USB 3 ports. That's in addition to the two ports that are from the integrated header, giving you a total of six USB 3. And keep in mind that we still offer a USB Charger Plus technology as well as USB 3 Boost. USB 3 Boost accelerating the performance for flash storage based devices and USB Charger Plus for allowing us to do quick charge even when our system is turned off for things like our tablets and our phones and other types of devices like e-readers. Uh, right up from there, we've got an eSATA 6G based connection, non-power. That's great for ultra high performance external connectivity, especially if you're maybe using this like in a, a NAS or home server or media server environment and you've got an external breakout box. And from there, we've got an Intel Gigabit Ethernet port integrated uh, in there. And in conjunction of this being the latest generation i-series network controller, which offers great throughput, low CPU utilization, and really great performance and management options, uh, this also offers our Game First 2 Packer Priority software, which allows us to go ahead and customize and improve our network connectivity uh, for low ping and low latency, and overall improve performance, whether it's downloading, whether it's streaming, or whether it's going to be uh, you know, making voice over IP phone calls. Uh, the cool, other cool thing is the Game First Packer Party software works in conjunction with the M Combo module and the integrated 811AC wireless support. So you can go ahead and map that Packer Party software for either the Intel port or for the 811AC on board, as well as the Bluetooth 4.0, uh, which is supplemental to the wireless connectivity. And lastly, here we of course have our Supreme FX audio uh, card. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this and talk a bit more about what Supreme FX is uh, for this mini ITX board and how it really steps it up to a whole nother level of sound immersion and a sound uh, experience. So with that, let's go ahead and remove the cart and talk a bit more about our Supreme FX audio design. But that wraps up our back I.O. Okay, guys, so next up here, we've really got something that uh, just makes this impact board in an entire class of its own, where it's really for the first time a mini ITX board uh, to a large degree has had really a focus on having outstanding audio design. Our focus uh, with the RG series motherboards as of late, especially within our gaming line like the Gene, the Hero, the Formula, has really been to focus on giving you guys discrete caliber audio but offered directly on the motherboard. And so with the Mini ITX board we want to continue in that tradition and we want to evolve upon it. Um, because of the limited space we weren't able to directly integrate on the board but we have an option to be able to mount this module directly on there where it doesn't impact your overall compatibility and offers you the improved sound card experience straight on the motherboard integrated 
This worries you don't have to go ahead and affect your PCIe expansion slot. So when we take a look here at the actual Supreme Effect solution, you can see that there's actually a lot going on, and we maintain a lot of the uh, key implementations that we've had on other Supreme Effects based designs, such as our use of Elna audio grade capacitors, where the actual electrolytic composition is specifically designed for a rich, warm tone and overall improvement specifically for audio in terms of its nature. So whether you're in your music, movies, or games, you're going to get a richer, smoother, cleaner sound experience. We also use a dual differential op amp design with actually four op amps in total, providing superior performance in terms of the sound stage, the clarity, and the overall response. Um, there's also the inclusion of actually a TI headphone audio file grade uh, operational amplifier, which allows us to drive headphones up to 600 ohms. So if you're using some really nice uh, Baron Dyke maybe some AKG, some Hi-Fi men, um, you know, some Sennheiser, whatever it might be, you can feel confident having a really clean level of power output capability for those headphones. So that's going to be a really nice touch. Um, and then, of course, we still maintain full shielding for our actual audio codec in terms of that ALC 1150. Uh, so that allows us to really, in unison with this total design architecture, uh, allows us to really have a high level of not only line level out output capabilities, but a really rich headphone output capability. So either way, which way when you're utilizing the actual Supreme Effect solution, whether it's for headphones or whether it's for speakers, you're going to get an improved audio experience, which really is unmatched, not only in relation to uh, normal ATX motherboards, uh, but is entirely a class of its own when it comes to mini ITX motherboards. So this is really a special implementation. There's a lot more design work that even has gone into it than what I'm detailing out right now. Uh, but you can definitely feel confident that you have something special here. Rounding it out, don't forget that this still continues to offer our uh, sonic radar technology, which is an in-game feature, which allows you to go ahead and have visual mapping for sounds, whether you're in games like uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, uh, Battlefield 3, or any first-person shooter game where you'll actually be able to see the gunshots or in-game audio effects real-time on an actual radar map. And we also continue to offer our perfect voice technology, which works in conjunction with all of this and special software optimizations to go ahead and minimize the actual noise that you have when you're in-game and using uh, applications like TeamSpeak, Xfire, or Ventrilo, so they get crystal clear audio dialogue uh, when utilizing in the microphone connection. Speaking of the microphone, we're about to demo a really cool feature for you that we have for this generation called Music PNP that even when your system is off will allow you to go ahead and take a mobile, uh, excuse me, a mobile device uh, such as a tablet or a smartphone and be able to use the line level input uh, excuse me, use your microphone as a line level input and then use the line level out uh, to go ahead and connect to a set of speakers even when your system is off in playback and audio. So why don't we quickly show you a demo of that. Okay guys, so right here we've actually got it set up to be able to show you a new feature that we have here on the impact board, which is Music PMP, which allows us to go ahead and take mobile devices such as, let's say, like a smartphone uh, or something like a tablet and be able to go ahead and connect that uh, to the system when it's already been installed. So here we don't actually have a system installed, but we've gone ahead and created kind of a little bit of a makeshift scenario. So if you imagine this was already inside of a system installed, um, the system is actually turned off, this would be the front connections for, let's say, the front of your chassis. So you'd have your microphone and you'd have your speaker connection. Uh, and normally you'd usually have some type of, let's say, either headphones or speakers connected to the line level output on the Supreme FX audio card. And that's pretty much the way that we have it. What we've gone ahead and done, though, is that we have a new feature that's been implemented that allows us to go ahead and use the microphone connection and use that actually as a line level input even when the system is entirely off. So as a, excuse me, as an example right here, you can see that if I go ahead and just uh, log in here on my smartphone and uh, pull up, let's say, a video that I was watching or was it could be a podcast or it could be some uh, you know, music that you're listening to, whatever it might be, um, you can see right here I'd be listening to it on my smartphone. But what I can go ahead now and easily do is I can now just go ahead and make a connection here have that connected to the mic input and have my speaker or my headphone connected to the line level output. Where it might fit in terms of that build consideration. And then from there, so I'm good to go. To and the cool thing is you see that I don't have actually anything installed. The system is entirely off. So, uh, so once again, let me just go ahead and pause that and let me reaffirm that of course this will entirely work when you have your system fully set up, but you don't have to have it turned on to be able to take advantage of this. So if you just want to be able to have a quick and easy way to be able to go ahead and output, you're good to go. PCI Express, the PCI so, Express power adapter. Once again, a really cool feature uh, that shows you ROG's attention to detail and our innovative nature of being able to bring you guys cool things that you haven't seen before. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up and be able to give you a little bit more context in terms of where the Maximus 6 Impact sits in the lay of land for you considering a small form factor build.
Okay guys, so wrapping things up, we've given you a lot of information relative to the Maxima 6 Impact. Hopefully you've been able to see that through the features, the functions, the overall designs that we've put forth on the board, we've really set a whole new bar for what the Mini ITX category offers. I think that the attention to detail that we focus in on, not only in terms of the component quality, but the new incorporations such as the Supreme Effects audio design, the M Combo module, which has been further improved upon with 811AC, Bluetooth 4.0, and ultra-fast uh, PCI Express-based NGFF, SSD support is just outstanding. When you combine that together with other hallmarks that the ROG boards are already bringing to the table, such as our Supreme Effects audio design, but with sonic radar technology and perfect voice, uh, or the Extreme Engine Digi Plus Power 3 componentry, or, or our class leading UEFI and all the software suite which complements that, whether it's going to be Fan Expert 2, which works with the hardware for four fan controls uh, and four fan headers that can be fully customized for three pin and four pin support, you know, USB charger support, onboard debug LED. I mean, pretty much you're getting all the key features that you would expect in a high-end ATX-based motherboard, but in an ultra-small form factor board that really could fit in a number of different usage scenarios, whether we're talking about a small form factor gaming box that you want to be able to take with you on the go, or whether you're talking about a small form factor, uh, maybe Steam, Steam Big Picture box, or maybe you're looking for a high-performance media center. Really, there's a lot of different ways you could cut uh, in terms of how you're going to be working with your system, and to that same degree, the type of hardware that you incorporated within it. And this board is going to be feel just as comfortable utilizing something high-end like our GTX 780 DirectCU 2, all the way down to something that's ultra small, compact, but still high performance like the 670 DC Mini. It's really going to be up to you, and unquestionably, we think that we have an outstanding board here. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, uh, please go ahead and feel free to drop them here on the YouTube page, or you can also go ahead and hit us up on the inbox as well on the YouTube page. Also, feel free to go ahead and check us out at our ASUS North America Twitter page as well as our ASUS North America Facebook page. As always, if you guys enjoy the video, please make sure and like and subscribe so you can make sure to keep it locked to all the content as it continues to come out. So always, take care, take it easy, and thanks for watching.